Hey, it's Brian with Team Aquascape, and I have a very special project series. I am here with Trevor from our tech department. You won't believe what this guy just built. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. So I'm sitting here with Trevor from our tech department. And Trevor, you've actually been with Aquascape for quite some time now. Yeah, yeah, I've been here for two years in the tech department and I was with construction for a full season and been around ponds my whole life, so. Now the pond I'm looking at behind all you guys does not look like a pond that you got from training with us for one year. You are a truly, truly talented artist. You do a lot of different types of art and stuff too, right? Yeah, so I went to art school, so that plays a big factor in kind of looking at things and being overcritical and kind of being artistic about it. It, so yep. it definitely plays a big part in that. The focus and the detail is like so amazing. And I think what's so great, especially for you viewers and stuff out there, is Trevor is part of the tech department, like I said earlier. So that means when he's looking at some of your guys' designs and drawings, he's gonna put the same type, he's gonna put the same pair of eyes on your drawings too. And he's gonna be a little overcritical. He's gonna look at the details, everything else. Tell them a little bit about what you do for Aquascape. Yeah, so I work in the tech department. And we basically work with our contractors to help with projects that are very complicated kind of like this one maybe on a larger scale maybe on a smaller scale but overall just helping with construction techniques quoting out large unique projects and just overall help over the phone yeah it's an amazing service that you guys offer and I think if any of you guys are ever getting into a project and don't know exactly where to go use these guys because they're so so talented and not just with how to lay everything out but the artistic side like what you've created I'm not kidding you guys I couldn't do it better none of the artists of the year could do it better it's an absolute masterpiece. The only thing I told Trevor I could do better than he could on this one is I could probably build it a little faster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, four months in, I, I would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm so excited to show you guys is, well, not me show you guys, Trevor show you guys, is kind of the layout of this, what he came up with, the construction side, the part I'm excited to show you is the walkthrough at the very end. So this is gonna be a two-part series. First part is you're gonna get down and dirty with Trevor, he's gonna go through the whole construction side the second part is going to be the reveal and i cannot wait to show you guys the reveal because it's amazing all right brian that's enough talking i'm gonna get into it <laughs> <laughs> Got a blank canvas. So here's our area that we're gonna be working with. Shout out to soon to be father-in-law, Nick. Thanks for your help on the machine. Did a great job cleaning up all this. We got our old lilac bush moved out. A couple of hydrangeas that were sitting over here and uh, basically ready to start spray painting. I'm gonna try to take what I have on paper here. Here's the design, transfer it to over there. About to start excavation, but I thought I'd take you through a quick walkthrough of the sprayed out design before we get started. So here's that viewpoint that I made a little sketch of. So we're hoping to turn that into that. So that's the thought right there. We have our patio that's gonna be going in here. All reclaimed pavers, thanks to grandpa. Over there hanging out today. We got some stepping stones going through the pond. We have the wetland over there. It's gonna be elevated probably two to three feet. Don't worry about the flags there. They're just marking for where I was thinking the wetland would go. There's no utilities there. Hopefully a little beach area or something cool with sand going on that side of things. And then we'll have pavers or stepping stones actually taking you on a little bit of a dramatic journey through the water feature time and time again so kind of interesting design elevation will then change another two feet down into our sunken reservoir fire pit area and then hopefully this area is gonna look something like that second drawing which is that so so we'll see what we can do start up the excavator and uh, get going for the day
What's up everyone? End of day three, making some good progress. Started excavation, got the pond roughed in a little bit, got the wetland roughed in, at least the hole going. Really loose soil here, so definitely odd digging conditions. Not a master operator here, so bear with my, uh, my rough digging skills, but it's a lot quicker than doing it all by hand. So good progress. Slowly but surely we're gonna get there. Things are changing as we're working through the process. Access was a little tight with the fire pit area on the far side over here so we decided to hold off on excavation and, and try to use as much as we can from the wetland and from the pond to build up our berm over here before digging that we don't want to lose access for all our stonework to come through here the deep stream kind of is is a little roughed in but we're working away here so cool stuff can't wait to start to get into the artistic things that's what i love to do but part of the process Guys, quick little update. Started to do some major carving in of the pond itself. So we have our troughs dug out, some of the shelves carved in, and the wetland is in over there. And got the spill bowl playing around with the placement of that. Awesome to use as a tall visual point without moving all the elevation or all the soil, I should say. All right, so we have water in the pond. Well, not the greatest thing to have or wake up to, but yeah, we got a lot of rain last night. We actually got most of it. It coming from this area right here. So we have some downspouts that just pour directly onto that blacktop and you can see it just carved its way through the dirt and mud and right into the, the pond. So be working on cleaning that up. We'll have some type of drainage system getting put in to kind of mitigate that issue there. I'm actually redirecting the rainwater into the pond. So kind of self-sustaining. But yeah, we got a muddy mess to work with today. We're gonna keep pushing forward. liner in fabric on top of the liner the, the textile underlayment protect that liner we have a bunch of troughs we got the stream that'll be going on the far side that'll have to get seamed on there'll be an overlap from the wetland over here we got more underlayment coming in slowly but surely back at it again. Beautiful Sunday morning in Lily Lake, Illinois, my home residence. I've got my dad out here. I got the pups and we are gonna start getting this rock pathway going through here. So this is gonna be pretty important. We're gonna have to place some of the larger stones to create this pathway going right through the middle of the pond. But it also, it's gonna take us simultaneously working with the brickwork just to make sure that everything is gonna be placed properly. Getting all the elevations, levels and whatnot right so that you can have water level at a good positioning when you lay the final patio next to it. So a lot of brain power going on today, but after these first couple rocks, I think we can start flying through some of the other rock work in here. And uh, it should go pretty well today. So excited to get into the artwork again. Stay tuned. Here we 
we are, we have our cantilevering bridge and then our, our big anchor stone. So this guy is going to anchor in this kind of island looking brick retaining wall I'm gonna have going in here. So I'd like to have something natural carved into that to look like we had to create something around it. Over here, we have kind of a little stair step that's gonna lead into this, this shallow area. I think I'm gonna try experimenting with some sand in this project. I know it can be a little tricky depending on the type of sand, but you know, I can take it out and try some different stuff or eventually transfer over to rocks. So we're gonna try and see, but this will be a cool little entry point. So you have the cantilevering bridge. I think water is gonna be about an inch below that. Still have to level everything out, kind of just figuring out how everything's gonna look and position so that we can, you know, support it accordingly. But that'll be a pretty cool area. And then the little step will be a couple inches below water as well. And yeah, so then carrying on, we got some, some jets coming all to the far end. This will be like a little beached area. We wanted some water movement, so I have a plumbed in jet over here. I think I'm also going to try a little gravity fed jet. So I'm going to experiment with my waterfall coming in here. I'm going to have a higher elevation of where the water is, and I'm just going to run a plumbing line inside the liner and over to this area, this side of the beach, I should say. And the idea is that that water will kind of travel through that pipe, end up here, and it'll be a soft push along this edge. And then eventually we'll run into this pipe, which will be a more uh, pressurized push, and that'll take it back into the water current that'll travel through the system and down into the negative edge, which would be our skimming system. So kind of coming together here again, slowly but surely working more on a skeleton crew type situation, but it's fun stuff. You know, this is what I enjoy to do. So stay tuned. We'll, we'll be making some progress on this wall here and figuring a couple things out, but yeah, good stuff. What's up guys wrapping things up for the day great day of progress uh, i just wanted to bring something to you guys that i thought was important when it comes to artistically designing your water features and that is reoccurring themes and so for instance in this feature we're going to have multiples of the patio ponds they're greatly used in the pond industry for customization bringing a spark of life and a spark of i guess humanity to an extent and to a naturalized ecosystem pond so we don't just have one we're going to have another one starting up top in the wetland, spilling in, creating a good elevation change without bringing the berm up. And we're also gonna have another one down in the negative edge area. So creating a cohesive body of work or body of pond, I guess, um, is, is a great thing to do. We're not just doing it with the patio ponds. We actually had started to implement our wood today. We also got more pieces of wood that we were able to reclaim from a good friend's property. And then also we have our retaining walls and whatnot that are going in. So these brick walls that we started on today started to do the stair steps going in we're not just going to have that area we're going to have this area this area over here it's going to be everywhere it's going to be great but it's creating a cohesive work of art anyways just thought i'd share that with you guys for the day we're making good progress stay tuned hopefully we're going to start wrapping things up up here and moving down to the negative edge soon so stay tuned up guys starting today off with some rain but it's an awesome day we're starting the waterfall so when we got the family out we got my fiance jamie we got my dad we have the soon-to-be father-in-law nick so um we're we're gonna get going here um good stuff coming soon stay tuned
back at it on a weekday after a long day of work, but we're out here getting some work done. It's been a while since I've uh, gave you guys an update, so I'm gonna kind of talk you through what I've done so far. And as you can see, we made some decent progress. So let me kind of walk you through what we've done so far. So got the waterfalls built over here. So we're gonna have a pretty dramatic drop right there. And then we have just kind of something a little more simple coming over here, just a single rock. Had a little bit of a cool texture to it. So that should be interesting. We have our weep hole going through the back up there just in case water level gets a little bit too high but yeah waterfall coming out the wetland it's gonna be awesome didn't worry too much about the stonework up in the wetland because i really really want to plant that up heavily i think it looks great when it's you know really heavily planted we get a pretty decent amount of sun back in this corner so that should take care of itself over i'd say not even a full season so yeah we got the waterfalls built a lot of retaining stones we got some pretty major elevation changes super cool log coming in here and then one of our biggest rocks right there just acting as a retaining stone really if you come over this way we have kind of an avalanche of granites coming in we have our pathway continuing on so it starts over here it will continue this way and then step over the short little stream we have and then we have our weir stones that we just placed next to this other massive log as you can see if the dogs are already enjoying it it's gonna be awesome once water's in there but weir stones were a little difficult to get in place and get to the width that i wanted it to be at but it's an important part of the whole feature so without this you know thought about the whole pond's water level could be a little bit different than what we want it to be so we really want the water level to be about an inch below those bricks over there however you know that's going to be dictated by this negative edge weir so we have our width we've calculated about how much water depth should go over that four foot width hopefully that'll go as planned i'm thinking there will be about two inches of water there so we've set that about three inches below that brick i think is what it's at so yeah this will be a really cool aspect very kind of shallow trying to keep this weir stone as shallow as possible for for the fish and whatnot to not go over the edge but we might have to play with that a bit after we get it started and see what it does we can always manipulate it as needed so now the difficult part comes going into the negative edge and sunken fire pit area it's taking a lot of brain power to work our way through this one but you know it's going to be pretty gnarly when it's done anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed that little update let's um let's get back to work before it gets too dark here because the pups are just dying to get this water feature done and i might be too not gonna lie so stay tuned we're gonna continue on here and uh keep plucking away did not go as planned yesterday. We did not get the basin, so that made a mess of a project. But as you can see, we got the basin in, got the liner, aqua box. It was not easy. So a lot of groundwater, a lot of issues going there, but we're working through it. Still trying to stick to my design. So rough day. It's all right though, fun stuff. Now to build some of the waterfalls coming in here, that is going to be awesome. We got some plumbing going in today. We have our pumps over here. So we got a SLD 4,000 to 7,000. That's gonna be our party pump. So that's basically only gonna go on whenever we're around looking for some extra flow over the waterfalls. And then we have our Aqua Surge 4,000 to 8,000. So that's gonna be basically one of the, the main components for this system. So that's gonna run 24 seven. That is going to feed our jet system, our wetland, and most of the waterfalls up there. The only thing is, I don't think it's gonna fully fulfill this water waterfall because we have a pretty wide width typically aiming for anywhere from 1500 to 3000 gallons per hour per foot so we have maybe two feet on that one and we got another foot or so on this guy I and mean, i'm looking for more robust flow i think we have like i said a lot of traffic over here so yeah we're trying to keep it pretty noisy and we have our dual union check valves great product gives you like three or four fittings in one right so we get 
out of the bottom of the vault from the pumps. We make basically a standpipe out of rigid PVC typically just to make it easy to access. And then we transition to our flex PVC coming out for the rest of the run. But that'll give us our elbow, our check valve, our MPT by slips, all that fun stuff just to make the, the process super easy. So anyways, we're gonna have the pipes run in from the top of the vault. That's got a vault extension on it. And we'll go through the liner with some bulkheads and then we are going to run that rest of the pipe going that way towards the waterfall. So we might have a couple of pipes to add flow in different areas, but we gotta get to work. We are losing daylight. So hopefully we're gonna get this running soon. Stay with me, we're almost there. So we got the pumps all plumbed up with the check valves. We have the stand pipe right there. You can see rigid as, as I was talking about earlier, it's nice to have something nice and solid going straight vertical. And when you're in that pump vault, it's a little tight quarters. So especially when you have two pumps, you wanna make sure everything's as easy as possible. And then we also drilled in a second hole in that pump vault extension. So like one of the things you can do with these pump vaults is you can kind of customize them. If we wanted to come out of this side, you could do that. If you wanted to go out of the other side, you just have to customize by drilling holes in there. So quick little tour of the pump setup. Now we're going to stub out of there with rigid PVC and transition to the flex after we exit the bulkhead. So. Hey, what's going on everybody? Uh, we're out here on Labor Day weekend and I got a special guest here today. What's up guys? Check it out. So had to finally bring out the Team Aquascape guys. So we're gonna get started for the day, but yeah, what do you think, Jack? I think it looks awesome. You've been showing me pictures and everything like that and pictures don't do it justice at all. The amount of detail work, I mean, we've known Trevor for a while now and he does some incredible work with just like the details and the details go unnoticed, especially in this feature here. There's a lot of wood and just, I can tell how, how much water is going to be flowing through everything and it's just going to look awesome. Just The walls look awesome. Sand bottom, we're really looking forward to it. Hopefully we can get it running today. That's the goal. Or at least we can see some of the water. We're going to try. Yeah, yeah, we want to see the try. waterfalls flowing. Maybe not finished, but we're yeah. going to do our best. So I got the guy who can help me get that done. So we're going to get started and we'll keep you updated with some progress. So stay tuned. So we've got the fire pit area, the subgrade fire pit area, I should say, excavated. We've got our drainage in here. So kind of just a French drain right there. It'll go underneath all of the aggregate that's going to go on top. We started to push hedging and whatnot in this area. And then we have our overflow that is right in there. So you can see that bulkhead. Basically, that's going to take the water that is excess off of the roof and whatnot, drains into the pond, tops the pond off. But then once it's too full, it'll actually find its way all the way down over there. Oh, you can see we have drain cap. But yeah, we got to get back to work so that we can get this going. Beautiful day. We've got rain coming in a couple days, so I want to get this all finished so we're not working in the mud moving forward. So it's moving along. First thing in the morning, we're starting off where we left off yesterday, starting to cut in plants for boxes. Right over here, we have to finish this step up from the retaining wall happening there, and then it'll follow all the way to the feature. Uh, I got my dad working on some boards, taking out nails and whatnot. Gonna have a rustic look to the plants for boxes. So we have one going over there. There'll be another one over here, kind of framing up the steps going down into this area. Moving along, moving along. Still lots of work.
great day of progress. We got the fire pit area basically roughed in. We just got to start finishing coping stones and whatnot, but check it out. We've got the planter boxes in. We've got all those stones worked in. We've got the base material in, the first step, and the fire pit. So, long time waiting. But, cheers to these guys. Sticking in there. Great day of progress. We're at the home stretch, I think. So, keep with us as we finish this project out. here another Saturday plucking away at the I would say kind of final 10% uh, we got Jamie's dad in the background working on some of the elevation for the different planting berms and then the grass and whatnot just kind of cleaning stuff up we got my dad over here working on putting in some corabels and different plants that we've went and gotten you know we're definitely gonna fill it in more so we're making way here we got our water starting to clear up a bit it's fall so this maple is just dropping leaves like crazy overall the the circulation is working pretty well well, we have our gravity fed jet it's doing its job that comes from all the way over there on that waterfall pushing water we have our other jets that kind of fall in line with that you can see some of the circulation there and then this guy under this stepping rock just blasting water so that's pushing all those leaves I, I think during the normal season we'll probably turn that down but yeah one of the important things I wanted to talk about was or at least I think it's important with design for the backyard in general is just elevation changes I know Brian says it a lot and a lot of guys out there will say it but kind of creating different elevations, creating, you know, mounds and hills and just planting on top of it and being strategic with your plantings all comes into play when you get that final product and then all of a sudden it feels like you're in a whole nother world. That's one thing, especially here in Illinois, that's a big deal is, is kind of creating those elevation changes. So, well, I'm going to get back to work on cutting these capstones coming through this fire pit wall. I got my work cut out for me today, but yeah, we're on that final 10%. So stay tuned. We're going to be releasing the final product pretty soon here. Guys, what's up? Doing a quick little update on the feature. Really wanted to start to showcase the sand. Note the clarity of the water and the clarity of the sand, really. I mean, that's kind of what I was looking to experiment with was is how clean was this gonna stay? Again, it's gonna be a long-term experiment, but I've already had it in here for over a week and it looks to be doing pretty good. I got my dog over here who also enjoys getting through there, stirring everything up. So part of the ecosystem he is, he is basically stirring everything up and forcing it into the filtration system. So it's an important part of recreational ponds and whatnot is is kind of consistently moving through it and having that life form a lot of the times we just use koi to stir through gravel and move things along but recreational systems it's a lot bigger so it will continuously move things throughout the system it is fall right now so we have a lot of these leaves starting to come down into here i haven't netted it yet because we're still working on it but we finished the capstones yesterday we have that done we have that over there and that over there kudos to those hardscapers who are good at that it was definitely a challenge for me to figure it out but you know i'm pretty happy with it overall for the most part but back on the sand using something called aqua quartz it's pool filter sand again more of an experimental thing but it's worked really well it's kind of a dense sand grain being based off of like a quartzite stone and the other thing that we look for is see how quickly that falls so it doesn't stay suspended very long at all i mean there's nothing floating throughout the system so that's one of the most important parts if you're going to try to use sand in a system is make sure that there's no sediments or fines that stay floating through the water column you want that to drop immediately so that and something that's more of an angular stone those are the two things that i was looking for quartzite is known for both of those characteristics so we're gonna try it we're gonna keep going with it see how it goes but yeah so quick update water clarity is looking good you can see the brightness of the sand over here kind of brings the whole thing to life a little bit over here there's nothing in the bottom of this yet except for the underlayment the liner is sandwiched in so it doesn't really showcase the quality of the ponds water clarity yet but it's definitely moving along the 
wildlife, whether it be my dog or the chickens in the back there are totally enjoying everything. We got a lot of landscaping done over the weekend and we are close. I'm gonna get some mulch here this week and then start to finish this patio. So the pond for the most part is done. It's just tying up everything around it for the design. We're around in the home corner, about to bring it in, but super happy with the progress and, and the pond so far. All right, so we are laying the patio today. Definitely a new experience for me, doing the herringbone pattern. Not a hardscaper, but I'm doing my best here. Yeah, so this is gonna be awesome. This is the last big project, I think, until we are doing the finishing touches, that last 10%. So the pups, they are ready for their backyard back, but we are gonna get started here for today. One last throw of the Frisbee before he has to go inside. You ready, bud? gonna be a good day. We're gonna hopefully finish this up and show you what we've got at the end of this. It's getting close guys. Hang with me. It's a little bit long. guys another weekend we have more work to do next weekend we are going to be having a pond party right here they've got a lot of patio work to do so we got our work cut out for us but today's a special day we are going to get our first fish for the pond and i think jamie is super excited she's got the net she is ready to go <laughs> <laughs> so we're ready to get some live fish in here to kind of bring the whole thing to life, I guess. But shout out to Jamie's cousin. She's looking to rehome some of her koi. So we are going to take those off of her hands and get our feature started. But you can see the patio work. It is coming along. We have to do all of the soldiers and all of the shaping of it, but the pavers are laid. So without further ado, let's go get some fish. <laughs> So we have attained the fish. It was a difficult task and an old pond, but there's some good looking fish. So excited, we are now acclimating them to the new water parameters by dumping some water in there and letting them kind of slowly transition. But it would be so cool to see those koi popping off that white bottom sand. So I am so excited to get these guys in here and I'm sure they are. Too. Working on our soldier course for the patio. As you can see, we're starting to lay out all of the bricks that were actually on the property already. My dad is hard at work, hard labor going on over there to take all these bricks out, bring them over. Kudos to him, thank you for doing that. But anyways, now we are getting into releasing the fish. So, I'm so excited to do this. I think Brew is ready for it. We're all ready to see these fish swimming in the pond, so let's do that right now. They've been acclimating. We have three koi fish, and then we have one golden orb, it looks like. So, eventually the golden orb We'll probably go to my parents' house, but yeah, let's let these guys go in the pond after they've acclimated for a good half hour. So we have the whole family working on this patio. We're pushing all the sand in between the joints. We have some of our cuts done. We've got the soldiers in place. It is looking phenomenal. And don't forget, this is all reclaimed brick. So super cool. No, if you can see, but right here, this is bar brick. So I just learned these were all pulled out of Elgin, Illinois from the streets about a hundred years ago or something. That's what the original owner of the brick said. So super, super cool. <laughs> Matches with our 120 year old house, but it's it's gonna be awesome because it just matches right up to those capstones that we did on the stairs that lead down into the pond to let you enjoy the whole feature right in the patio. <laughs> it guys we're done we've completed everything that there is to do for this year i mean of course it's going to be a tinkering process for me but the project is done i'm ready to show you guys what an incredible journey what a long journey but what an incredible journey it was thank you to everybody involved from my dad especially to jamie's dad to my brother grandpa jamie for hanging in there and trusting the process um, all you guys for staying tuned and watching through I'm super excited to share this with my family and friends coming over 
over for the pond party. And then after that, we have Brian coming out to check it out. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. You guys know, stay tuned, like, comment, subscribe, tell me what you guys think. And then beyond that, hopefully uh, Brian gives me his stamp of approval. So we'll see how that goes. I'm so excited to show you guys. So stay tuned for the reveal in the next video.